Okay. So we did talk about uh, structural equation modeling in our earlier session, but let me just uh, uh, talk about what is it again. Uh, so structural equation modeling is a technique which is able to assess and correct for measurement error. The beauty of this method and why this method has become so popular now is that it provides us a chance to model the measurement errors associated with our measurement. So you have a factor, you have a construct, you have its measure, and there are going to be measurement errors. So doing regression testing along with the measurement error. Structural equation modeling takes a confirmatory rather than exploratory approach to data analysis. We were talking about this when we were doing uh, factor analysis, and I told you that there is a difference between exploratory and confirmatory uh, factor analysis. Exploratory factor analysis assumes no a priori information as to which item is going to load onto which factor, that is all left to the software to decide. Whereas when we are going to work with structural equation modeling, we will talk about confirmatory models. So we will specify our factors. We will specify what are the items that load onto the factors. We will also specify what specific paths do we expect to test between these factors, okay? So it is a confirmatory approach. We will have to, we will have to tell the software a lot of these things. SEM procedures, they can uh, incorporate both observed as well as unobserved. So I think that is very simple to understand, observed and unobserved. That means observed and latent variables so we have already been discussing so we can model the latent factors using this approach and there is no approach no method that is available which is which can do all of these things uh, in one go so you can test your measurement models or confirmatory factor models and you can also do this regression testing all of this can be done in one what are the inputs to the software? Well, one of the inputs that we will, uh, we will be providing is what we call as the raw data or the covariance matrix. So usually in this uh, software, which we are going to learn also, which is AMOS, and this broad class of structural equation models, we call them as covariance-based structural equation modeling, okay? So it is called as covariance-based. There is another approach which is called as partial least square uh, uh, structural equation modeling. So what, what we are going to, or AMOS is a, is a software that works on the covariance matrix. Now, this is given as, a, as an input to the software. If you give a raw data to the software, the software will actually compute the covariance matrix at the back end. And then, so there is a covariance matrix. And then what you also give is a model. And let me just show you how, it, how, it, how this works. So let us say we have to test this particular model. Right, so you, sorry, this is too. Okay, so we want to test this particular model. This is my factor one and these are my items. And then I have 
factor 2 and these are my my items and then this is the path between F1 and F2. So this is our structural model that we want to, very simple model that I want to test. So, so one is we will specify the the model, okay? So we are going to to specify the model that we have, okay? Then what, what we are also going to give is a sample based covariance matrix. Okay, so what does this mean? It means that from the sample, you have collected data on six items, okay? Five and So this is your I1, I2, I3, I4, I5, and I6. And you get your sigma 1 square, sigma 2 square. These are the variances on the diagonal. And you have the covariances here. Right. This is called as the, now this is based on the data you have collected from the sample. Now what happens is this will be given to AMOS, the software that we are. And by the way, AMOS stands for analysis of moments of sample. Right? And what is the moment? The moments are these covariances. That is why this is called as the covariance based structural equation modeling technique. So uh, it is going to work with the covariances derived from your sample. And that is why it is going to analyze these moments of sample and hence the name AMOS. Now, what will the software do based on this model? Okay, what it is going to do, it is going to estimate your factor, factor one, factor two. It is going to estimate the lambdas, lambda one, lambda two, lambda three, lambda four, lambda five, lambda six. It is going to estimate the the errors, measurement errors, it is also going to estimate this path. So if I were to now write my equation I1, I will write it as what we were writing earlier also, I will write it as lambda 1 F1 plus measurement error. Similarly, I will say I. this will be my predicted value. Lambda 2 times F1 plus E of, and I will have a predicted value of I3, which will be Lambda 3 times F1 plus measurement. Similarly, I will get 
predicted value of I4, I5, So, based on this model that I have specified, okay, I am going to, I will have this, these values that were derived or that were present in my sample and these values that of these items that have been derived based on the model, right? So, this is what we call as sample based values of items and model-based values of items. Now what the software is going to do is it will again compute a covariance matrix five and six, so I have I1, I2, I3, I4, I5, and I have I6. These are predicted values. And it will have sigma one predicted square, sigma two predicted square, sigma three predicted square, sigma 4 predicted square, sigma 5 predicted square, and sigma 6 predicted square. So these are predicted variances. Similarly, you will have predicted covariances. Okay, so you will, you have now model based covariance matrix and as this is called as model based covariance matrix. Now we were wanting to test whether this model is a good model which explains the relationships between the items that we have and, and so on. Okay, and so if this model was a good model, model is theoretically valid in that case what you should expect so we call this as s which is the sample based covariance matrix and i can call this as sigma which is the model based covariance matrix so if that is the case where we are saying that our model is a good representation of the uh, the data it is it is actually representing the reality that we have in that case what you should have is this s should be ideally equal to the sigma that means what it should come as close that means my model the the matrix that I have recreated based on my model 
should actually superimpose the matrix that I had collected from the data. And we will say that model fits the data. Model fits the data well in that in that case. And so this difference, so ideally, as I mentioned, this difference should come out to be zero. It should come as close as possible to zero. Okay, so, so broadly we can say, and this is tested using an index which is called as chi-square in this. And so we say that our null hypothesis in structural equation models is that chi-square is zero, okay? And the alternate hypothesis is that chi-square is greater than zero and we test what is the p-value. So in structural equation modeling, we will always try to look for a p-value greater than 0 0.05. That means ideal case, we don't want to reject the, we want to fail to reject H0. If we fail to reject H0, what will it imply? That my S is equal to the model-based covariance matrix, which will imply that my model is valid. That means my model represents the reality. Okay, for its specific degrees of freedom, and I will tell you how these degrees of freedom are computed in, in structural model, but essentially, at the end of the day, what we are trying to do here is we are trying to check based on our model, we will create the covariance matrix based on the sample, we'll recreate, we'll estimate all these parameters. Okay, these are called as model parameters. We will estimate these model parameters and re-estimate the model-based covariance matrix. And ideally, we expect that these two matrices should superimpose. And then we will say that, yes, our model is a very good model and it represents the reality very well. Sir, so I we, have a question at this yes. point. Uh, yes. Sir, Let me when just... do we decide? Sir, 